Hey guys, Anonymous here. How you doing? Uh, we're gonna be going through a complete Mistraft FPGA build. Uh, this starts off with a DE10 Nano. Then we have a USB hub, the, the analog I/O. We have the the different uh, sides of the case uh, from the Ultimate Mister Kit. 128 uh, megabit SD RAM module, real time clock, and I already installed the uh, the audio I/O here on the under underside of the fan. All right, so let's get to it. Alright, so you just take out the uh, the main DE10 Nano here. You're gonna remove this top shield. If you uh, if you're going for more of a, a you know a, a budget build, you can repurpose this um, clear piece under on the underside, and uh, use longer standoffs and mount your USB hub that way. Uh, that's what I did with my initial builds. Looks like the DE10 Nano is currently out of stock on Amazon, you know, at the time of making this video. So uh, don't pay the reseller price. Go through Jurassic or Intel or uh, DigiKey. And you should get it for the original price of $130. Uh, and the, the Amazon price is through resellers. It's up to like $170. You know, they're just price gouging for no reason. All right, so you take this main board. So yeah, what I was saying with this clear side, you can mount it on the underside with longer standoffs and put like a cheap, you know, eight dollar Amazon OTG USB hub and use it for that. But we're we're doing full uh, builds with the powered USB hub. So the first thing you want to do is install a heatsink on the main Altera chip. So we're gonna be doing that here. You just want to apply a pressure. Okay. Next thing we want to do, if you have any of the uh, the RTC, you want to put that in now. It goes on this, uh, the Ethernet port is facing towards you. It goes on this bottom right corner. You just push it in. Just like that. All right, uh, the next thing I like to do is install the, the top analog uh, I.O. You want to make sure your pins are all straight. I got one little tiny crooked pin, but yeah, that's good to go. When you're pushing these together, there is a pin under on this side right here. You want to make sure that pin is, is lined up and straight. So if that gets bent, it's not a good thing. All right, so with the Ethernet port facing towards you and the buttons facing towards you you push them together this big black connector connects to this row of the GPIO pins you're also plugging in the uh, the analog uh, audio in over there so I made so those are started I started these now I'm gonna make sure all my pins on this side are, are correct and they are. So I like to push that side in and then push this other side in. Just like that. It's nice and snug on both sides. Next thing I like to do is install the RAM module. So with these uh, these newer RAM modules that don't have the three pins, uh, the, the side, you can read in the text, it says this side fades outwards. So this goes on the other, there's an open slot over here. You push down. Just line it up and push it down. And that's the RAM. All right, so the next thing uh, we do, since we're doing this case, is install some standoffs, some little hex standoffs here. And you do that all four corners. This uh, just passes along the screw supports uh, for the top of the case. Now, you don't have to have a case. You don't have to have, This is like the premium, premium setup. Um, it's from ultimatemister.com. You can build a mister for under 200 bucks by just a D10 Nano, 
you know, some RAM, some 32 megabit RAM, and then an OTG hub. And you're in the, in the, you know, in the door for uh, sub 200. So don't feel like you have to, you know, go through this fancy setup. Also, since it's a modular system, you could always update later. I, I can't find my uh, my tool to screw these in. I'm probably using it. It's probably inside of a pinball game. All right. So next thing we do is start to assemble all the parts. So the we're gonna use we. This is the 2.1 USB hub with a USB bridge. See the bridge right here. It's nice and clean. Uh, with the Ethernet port facing towards you, like this. You're gonna want to uh, install the USB first. They just push down like that and then you come over here and there's a little prong there's a little two prong pin that gets power you're not gonna be able to see it that well through this camera right there that goes uh, uh, like pinches like this around a prong you're gonna make sure that's lined up and it goes on top of it okay so next what I like to do is just kind of hold it from top and bottom and then uh, push all the parts together. Now the, these newer uh, versions of the case have uh, these pins that are better. So these big square uh, supports versus little tiny pins that previously had. So the, these sides go on first and then the white uh, ends go on last because they actually overlap and the white ones are higher. So you want to put these on first. You just kind of push them on. There we go, that's that side. You have to do a little wiggling to make sure everything's lined up. Okay, there's the two sides. Now, like I said, these go on top. Oh, and if anybody asks in the comments, this is the Bomberman Hero soundtrack from the N64. So just a little pushing around here. It's not easy, but it's not too difficult. Just don't get frustrated with it and don't rush. I want this to be a little bit flusher. There we go. And... Okay, there we go. So you want to make sure all the, the screw holes are all lined up. And this white part sits inside of the two edges.
All right, now for the, the difficult part. You have to do this USB bridge you need to be careful for. Yeah, I didn't want to cooperate too well. The previous build went even smoother than this build, so... You know, that's what happens when you try to make a YouTube video. Alright. Looking pretty good. So these new pins, they kind of keep, they keep their place because they're like friction. So what you want to do now is install the bottom side to, to keep all the case together. So I already applied the little, uh, little rubber legs on the bottom. This sits inside of the four walls. And you're going to push things together to make sure everything lines up. So you, there's four big screws that are included in the kit. You, uh, those go on the bottom. I like to use them on the bottom because the ones that come on the, the D10 are a little bit shinier. So I use those for the top of the case. So I just get, I don't crank these down yet. I just kind of get them started. And then when I get to the uh, the top of the case uh, being put on, then I tighten everything down. <laughs> Thanks chat for always being chat. <laughs> Try to get this corner down. So you might need to like, you know, move things around, apply some more pressure to one side, relieve pressure from the other side. You have a little bit of finagling to do, but eventually it will all come together. Come on now. Hope I didn't install this one screw too close. Or, uh, this one foot standoff. I can always remove it if I have to. Before I tighten this down, I'll make sure everything's good to go. fine once it's all tightened down okay what are you guys talking about tiramisu for
Oh my gosh. Squeak, squeak, squeak. It's a little bit tighter than uh, previous builds. Everything's fine though, I think. You just want to make sure nothing's being squished in the ports. So if something was like not aligned properly, you know, this case wouldn't uh, want to come together, but it's just a tight fit this time around. Sorry, YouTube, for the squeaks. I'll mute it for this one. All right, so now we're gonna apply the top side. Uh, when you're doing the top side, you wanna then uh, put on the uh, light pipes. You go over these little uh, three lights here. Thanks, uh, the arcade for the for the raid. The host. I forgot to remove the original uh, SD card. Let's do that now. All right, so this top part, you're going to want to bend this connector for ease of uh, insert, to put it in easily. And then you just push it in here to one of these connectors that are right here. All right, now we're gonna install the, the top four screws. Hoping these go smoother than the other ones. Again, you might have to push things, you know, around to make all the holes line up. After this, we'll be looking at the SD card. I think that squeaking was because I installed the legs, the uh, the bottom feet too close. Uh, the standoffs, little rubber feet. That's what was giving us the squeak. Making a killing. I'm doing it for free. Hold on. This is not right. Oh, there we go. Alright, so that's all assembled. It was a little bit rougher than uh, my last build, but uh, everything's good to go. So we're going to test it now, as well as show off the USB uh, file structure. I'm just going to install my uh, Logitech dongle here. Connect some internet.
and I have prepared SD cards, uh, but I will show you guys what to do. I already made these cards uh, offline. First boot up. All right, we can tell the USB hub is also working because uh, we have light there. All right, so let me uh, backtrack just a second. So if we're uh, if you're setting this up for the first time. You are going to want to use the SD uh, format tool. That's the, this right here. And that will get you the basic formatting, partitions, and everything you need for the, the additional Mr. setup. And then you're going to want to run uh, the updater script. So that's, uh, that's this over here. You want to uh, you know put the script on your on your device. And hit F12 or the the middle button on the uh, Mister, and then from here you go to update, and you want to let this run. What this will do is make sure you have all the latest new files, as well as download uh, and create folder structure for you to put your ROMs into. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. This one will go a little bit faster because it's already been prepared, but it will. There is has been some updates since uh, since I prepared the, the the card. So while this is running, I'm going to show you what the your final folder structure should look like. So should be something. Well, actually, which one are we going to show you? It should be something like this. So you're going to have underscore arcade underscore computer un underscore console so this is where it downloads the rbf files so like console oh download all that um your boot rom is where you want to put your 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 games so if you have like you know say super nes you just rename the file to dot rom so, so for my super nintendo i have snes dot rom um for your games you want to, it's going to create an, uh, all this folder structure in your root. Uh, so it's going to create like a NES folder, Super NES folder, etc. You can move all of those core specific folders to a games folder. And that just cleans everything up here. Um, and then you can put your, you can put like, so C64, I have different zips. So I have a zip of the cartridges, a, a zip of the D64, zip of the PRGs, and zip of taps. Again, like NES, you could have, um, you can have just, you can have your boot ROMs, which you initially need, but also you just, you know, one zip of all the NES games that you need. So that's what your folder structure is going to look like. So let's return back to uh, the Mister. So it looks like it just finished updating the script, and let's test everything out. So the three, if you look to the right of the Mister, there is those three. Uh, like stacks that lets you know that you have 32 64 128 uh, megabit SD RAM so let's look here so let's do a test so it automatically downloads the time and everything um, you want to also go into this INI settings this will uh, it will download this file when you run the updater and you can set here you can set all the different video modes so I like to, for the V-Sync Adjust, if you're going to be playing off HDMI, you want to do this low lag setting. If you're not, then you could use the Match Display or Match Core. Uh, it, it, those are a lot easier to capture. So low lag here. We'll go ahead and set that up for them. And then if you're using uh, YPBR, so if you're using Component Out, 
you want to turn that on. If you're using RGB on, RGB, you want to have this composite sync on. Uh, you can also down, run the script to download fonts and set your font here. I like the arcade puzzle bobble. And what else? I like to turn on this volume control so you're able to uh, indiv independently control the volume here. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead. You can also set your boot core. You can set all kinds of stuff here. Save. And this edits your Mr. INI file. So if you do anything, if you mess anything up there, you can always put your SD card in a computer, a Windows computer, and edit the INI to, to change any of those settings. That's all that that script is doing. All right, so let's do a test here. Let's test the, the Neo Geo core that uses the 128. So the uh, the in and out of the HDMI is not is not something you're going to encounter. That's my that's my specific capture here. So and that's also because we've set it to low lag. And that's not as clean of a signal as it is uh, the other options for VSync. So Neo drift out, sure. So it loads right up. And this is after you you know find the correct files for the Neo Geo and BIOS and all that stuff. There is uh, there's something uh, somewhat of a starter kit out there, which will have uh, all the BIOS files. I cannot share that with you guys, but it's out there if you look. Um, all right, well, so that's the uh, that's an initial build of the Mr. FPGA. It's uh, it's a great system. Uh, I've been using it um, for almost a year now. I play on an RGB monitor and. Uh, spit out 1080p to the stream. That's a perfect solution for streamers. Uh, there's no like, n there's no lag on controllers, especially if you use uh, one of the low latency IP APIs. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. And if you uh, if you like what you see here, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe on YouTube. If you're if you want to catch my live streams, you can uh, follow me on Twitch. And uh, I always tweet out on Twitter when I'm going live. I have a really active Discord when it comes to Mr. So uh, join that Discord if you're interested in that. Also, uh, the best place for information is Smoke Monster. So uh, follow them on Twitter as well as if you become a Patreon member, you can um, get access to that Discord. And that Discord is where all the FBGA news is really happening. That's where all the people are talking about stuff and just, you know, extremely smart people talking about uh, the core they're working on or the problems they're having. It's, it's, it's a great read. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.